Hello and welcome to this short presentation about Jackson Amino Research's new products, anti-alpaca IgG and VHH domain secondary antibodies, products used for the detection of camelid antibodies. To get started, what are VHH antibodies and why are they so interesting? As scientists, we are most familiar with the normal structure of an antibody. It contains a large heavy chain that defines the antibody subclass and isotype, and a smaller light chain that, when bound to the heavy chain, makes up a region of the antibody that can bind to an antigen through the variable region complex. Up until recently, it was thought that this was typical for any species that used antibodies as part of its immune system. In the early 1980s, however, it was discovered by those in Hammer's lab that camelids, alpacas, llamas, and camels contain a unique structure for their IgG2 and IgG3 subclasses. These subclasses are devoid of both their light chains and CH1 domain of the heavy chain. So what it takes a typical antibody to do with two variable domains, camelid antibodies can do it with one. Since this discovery, this region of the camelid 2 and 3 subclasses has been cloned out of its full length IgG context and extensively studied. These small antigen binding variable domains are often referred to as VHH domains, single domain antibodies or nanobodies. Their typical IgG folds have a beta sheet structure and three CDR loops that make up the antigen paratope. So what are some of the benefits of VHH antibodies? First off, they have one contiguous gene sequence, which enables one to directly PCR out the VHH gene segment from the B-cell genome in a straightforward manner. Second, because they are so small, they have access to normally inaccessible small pockets of proteins that a canonical antibody cannot bind to. Third, they are tightly folded and have been found to be both pH and heat stable. Next, from a therapeutic perspective, they have been found to have good tissue penetration and clear the body rapidly. Finally, they can be produced in high yields in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic systems. So if you're interested uh, in developing a VHH antibody, the first thing you would clearly start with is the immunization of an alpaca or a llama. Uh, from here, you might uh, go after uh, the lymphocytes. Okay, from the B cells, you would remove the DNA you would PCR out the uh, variable gene and undergo some sort of panning process using phage, which is typically done to identify clones of interest, and then go on to express the protein and then characterize it. So let's start with some of the tools that we've developed and talk about uh, the immunization of the alpacas. So this is an experiment we've done to show what happens when you immunize an alpaca, at least in, in our hands. We immunize an alpaca on day zero boosted along this pathway and you can see that the total IgG would rapidly climb as one would expect during a typical immunization uh, schedule. However, this is a measurement of total IgG and we know that the VHH domain comes primarily from the IgG 2 and 3 subclasses. So if you decided to go after your lymphocytes by watching total IgG, you might pick a time to isolate B cells where the IgG is very high, but the sub class two and three is very low. So this is gonna, you're uh, having access to a smaller portion of VHH uh, domains potentially. But if you're able to track the two and three subclasses, for example, and you're willing to wait a little bit longer, you can find that sweet spot where you wanna harvest the B cells for the IgG and three uh, PCR products down the road. So this first product uh, that we wanna int introduce you to is our goat anti-alpaca subclass 2-3 specific and it's specifically geared to enable you to track the immunization process an alpaca or a llama uh, to find that time frame when it's optimal to harvest those b cells and undertake pcr to get to get at the vhh domain so moving on in the process once you've completed the immunizations cloned out your vhh gene segments and identified your initial pool of hits it's time to start expression and purification trials. So this slide shows an example of where we've expressed and are, we are characterizing a VHDH domain from E. coli. So in the third panel, you can see where we've got background E. coli lysate. We've got a clone that's expressing what appears to be very, very well, and a clone that, that appears to be expressing very, very poorly. And that's also shown in panels A and B. The clone was tagged with the HIST tag, so probing this Western with an anti-HIS antibody shows you a signal for the high expressing clone and a weak signal for the low expressing clone. Uh, there's also somewhat of a bit of a background here uh, with this antibody. We've created an anti-VHH antibody for this purpose as well and conjugated it to peroxidase. And in this Western blot, you can clearly see a very highly expressing clone 
with strong signal and even the weak expressing clone with a uh, with a moderate signal so you're not missing anything and again you've got very very low background so we find that this tool is very useful for doing things like quick screens on the front end to look at expression levels of these uh, HHs out of E. coli and additionally they can be used uh, in ELISA's or any other uh, format where peroxidase is typically utilized. Once you've gone ahead and found your clones of interest, it's of course time to purify and characterize them. So the next few slides I'm going to show you some data where we're characterizing the utility of these VHH antibodies. Here's an example where we've got eight different clones that we're screening. We'd like to know which one binds our target of interest uh, so we can move forward and make our candidate picks and move forward with large-scale expression. So in this case what we're doing is an ELISA. We're coding an ELISA plate with uh, some recombinant GFP that we made, coming in with our eight different VHH clones, and then detecting those clones with a peroxidase conjugated GOAT anti-alpaca VHH specific antibody. So again, as we titrate in our clones after some small scale purification, it's very clear which ones are responding very well, binding very well to this recombinant GFP. So. In this case, it's, it's clones three and eight that are doing extremely well, and clone six is at the bottom of the barrel. So again, here's an example where we're using a peroxidase conjugated go to antiopaca VHH as a tool to help us identify our clones of interest. Uh, you could do this if you had a histag uh, variant of your VHH, but if you're limited to the kinds of tags you want to put on that VHH, this is a very, very nice alternative that's very sensitive uh, to this format. Once the expression and purification trials are completed, a more thorough characterization of the nanobodies is typically done. In the next few slides, we're going to give a couple of examples where we used our GOAT anti alpaca VHH secondary antibodies in fluorescence microscopy and flow cytometry. In this experiment, we show the labeling of KI67 in HEP2 cells using a rabbit anti KI67 primary antibody followed with a VHH alpaca anti rabbit which is detected with an Alexafluor 488 labeled GOAT anti-VHH secondary antibody. The KI67 is in green. We counterstain the nucleus with DAPI and tubulin with a mouse anti-tubulin primary antibody followed up with Rhodamine Red X labeled GOAT anti-mouse. As you can see, the KI67 is specifically labeled with nice contrast to the rest of the image. Our last example illustrates the use of anti-alpaca VHH domain secondaries in flow cytometry. In this experiment, we isolated lymphocytes from human blood and labeled the cells with bound human IgG by incubating them with VHH anti-human IgG primary, followed by the addition of an Alexafluor 48 labeled GOAT anti-alpaca VHH secondary. As you can see, about 30 to 40 percent of the lymphocytes are stained as expected. In another sample, we also interrogated the lymphocytes to determine which portion were B cells using an APC labeled anti-CD19 antibody. The CD19 positive cells can be seen in the bottom right quadrant and the relative numbers are low as expected. Also included in the sample was our Alexafluor labeled anti-VHH. The top left quadrant is devoid of any labeled cells indicating that the anti-VHH antibody is specific. The last panel shows lymphocytes stained for both CD19 and those containing human IgG. One would expect that all of the CD19 cells would have bound human IgG, and this is indeed what is observed. All the CD19 positive cells shift into the top right quadrant and are positive for human IgG. In summary, I'd like to share with you a few more details about the anti camelid antibodies I've introduced today. The first secondary is a general GOAT anti-alpaca antibody that will recognize all alpaca and alama immunoglobulins. It does not discriminate between the different subclasses and thus is useful when you want to observe the entirety of a camelid immune response or don't need specific VHH or subclass information. The next product will also recognize all alpaca and llama immunoglobulins, but we have removed the cross-reactivity to bovine, human, mouse, rabbit, and rat serum proteins. We recommend using it when antibodies from other species are present in an assay. Our IgG2 and IgG3 specific antibody is listed next. As noted in the presentation, this is a good antibody for monitoring the immune response for indirect measurement of VHH titer. It does not recognize the VHH domain as well itself, however, so if this is your goal, the VHH specific products are recommended. Recognition of VHH itself can be done with either two of these products. The first has not had any cross-reactivity to other species immunoglobulins removed, 
and so is useful for direct labeling experiments. The second of these two does have species immunoglobulin reactivity removed, and so it is fit for sandwich assays or multi-labeling experiments where other species, primary or secondary antibodies are used. Finally, products are available conjugated to fluorescent dyes, enzymes, and biotin should you need them in that format. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time and we appreciate your interest in our secondaries to camelid antibodies.